So we're talking about throttle bodies or carburetors. There's one part they share in common and that is the intake manifold. The intake manifold's job is very, very simple, it is to take that air or air fuel mixture and evenly distribute it across the cylinders. But how it does it, why it does it, well, there's a lot more to it. So let's start with the carbureted intake manifolds like we have here on the table. Now these are usually gonna be made of either iron or they're gonna be made of aluminum. And their job, like I said, is to take air from the carburetor. The carburetor is gonna draw air in, mix it with fuel, and then vacuum will bring that air fuel mixture into the manifold where it is distributed evenly to all eight cylinders in the case of a V8 engine. That's the beginning of the combustion process, so it's very important for an even distribution to all eight cylinders. Now, while this does draw air in and separate it, it also draws coolant in, so it always make your engine breathe and allow air to get to it, but it also cools it down and keeps it running. So when it comes to the intake manifolds for a carbureted setup, you have basically two styles. You have your dual plane manifold and you have your single plane manifold. We're gonna start here with the dual plane manifold. Now the dual plane is definitely more common for most street vehicles and we'll explain why in a second. Now the dual plane operates like two separate manifolds. Basically you have a line down the middle of it, one air is drawn into one side for the four cylinders, and then air is drawn to the other side for the other four cylinders. You also have a high or low rise version. Now a low rise dual plane like this Wien manifold here, you're talking about shorter runners and a lot of unequal lengths. It's gonna be great for a street car, but it's only gonna make power up to a certain RPM, 5,500 to 6,000, again, depending on motor and carburetor. The reason people go to the higher rise one is now those runners get longer. Those longer runners will promote more torque, but they'll also promote a lot more airflow, which can make more power at higher RPM. Now the single plane shown here doesn't have the dual setup like the dual plane. It is simply one large open plenum area inside. So basically as the air comes in, it just goes out to the whole thing as one complete process. Where here you've got almost two separate processes happening. So the benefit of this, you can get more air in and you get it out to the runners a lot faster. The drawback is, is, is the airflow itself. When you're talking about a single plane intake, you need a lot of airflow to make a lot of power. So these things actually do really, really well at high RPM, but you kind of give up a little bit in the curve in the lower RPM areas. So that's why for a lot of people, the dual plane makes a much better street strip manifold, and the single plane is definitely more for racing. Now let's talk about intake manifolds for electronically fuel injected engines. Now on most of your modern vehicles, they're actually going to be made out of plastic, but also a lot of them are going to be made out of aluminum. And the principle is basically the same. Take air into the plenum and then distribute it evenly to the cylinders. Now in the case of a fuel injected setup, you're gonna have a throttle body that draws the air in through here. And the injectors are mounted down at the bottom here and basically mix the fuel as the air is going down the runners. Now if you're talking about a direct injected motor, in that case, it's just air being distributed as the fuel's put in right at the cylinder. But again, these work by the same principle of get the air into the manifold, into the plenum area, and distribute it to the cylinders. When it comes to EFI intakes, runner length and plenum volume are gonna have a lot to do with horsepower and torque. Now, in your factory engine setup, the factory manifolds, again, are usually made of plastic, especially on modern cars, and they have kind of a mid-length runner and a smaller size plenum, which give you even horsepower and torque kind of across the board. Now, a lot of these intakes also use a variable length runner, which uses some sort of a flap control to make that open at high RPM and close at low RPM, which gives you better torque and better horsepower. Now, when you get in your high-performance aftermarket intakes, like this Ford Performance one here, now you're talking about shorter runners and a larger plenum. This will allow more air to get in, and the shorter runner length is going to create more horsepower. Now, in the case of a short runner, you do lose a little bit of torque and a little power down low, but it's more than made up for in the higher RPM. Now, again, with plenum volume, you can only force so much air in naturally aspirated, but that's where blowers, turbos, and boost come in. The more air you can push in with a supercharger or a turbo will allow these larger plenum intakes to really shine. Now, as you can see, over the years, intake manifold design and function has changed quite a bit, but in the end, they still do the same basic job. And if you're looking to add more horsepower to your Mustang, upgrading the intake manifold is still a great place to start.